Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Maxim Naidnov, and here with me is Svetalina. We are part of UI5 development, uh, where, as Oliver explained, we develop testing tools and technologies. Uh, here, we want to introduce you to one important aspect of OPI tests. So this, this talk assumes that you, you've used OPI and you know what it is. And we will uh, share some good practices how to increase the reliability of those tests. So why is this important? Uh, if, you, if you've been on our previous session, uh, where we introduced this end-to-end -end testing framework. There we show the testing pyramid, and uh, there, uh, if you remember, OPA is on the bottom level, on the level of unit tests. And the idea is that with OPA, you create application tests where you mock the backend. Those tests are executed very fast, and with them, you can have a wide, uh, extremely wide coverage of the functionality of your UI. So you test the UI. And test it extremely well, but this all depends on having the test, uh, the having a reliable test that actually you can count on. Yeah. So we'll share some, some strategies, what to prefer and what to avoid uh, when writing your OPA tests. So let's get started. First, the most important thing is always use autoweighter. So if uh, if you remember, autoweighter is our mechanism of synchronization between the framework, or the OPA framework in this case, and the runtime, so UI5 runtime. So with, uh, with classical Selenium, for example, you need to manually create this synchronization in the form of uh, writing code that waits for something to appear. A classical uh, example is you press a button, something appears on the screen. You need to validate only when something appears. So you need to write this code to manually do it with OPA. The idea is that you combine both of the waiting of the condition to, f to synchronize and the condition to validate into a single wait for, um, into a single selector and put it in our proprietary wait, wait for condition. But this is uh, problematic in the sense that it's relatively hard to uh, build this condition. So in uh, the classical, or when first OPA was introduced, uh, this mechanism was built, and this relies completely on polling. So when you write a wait for a statement, actually it does polling on the control tree. It checks every 400 milliseconds for up to some time. It checks for a condition. And when the condition happens, it, uh, it uh, gives you the element found. But with this approach, it's hard to catch some edge cases. Like, for example, it's hard to create a selector uh, for something to appear if the UI is built dynamically, for example, with, uh, with smart controls. And so to relieve the developers from the burden of creating um, such uh, selectors, we actually introduce the outweighter mechanism. So in this mechanism, uh, what happens in practice is that in the, con in the selector, we implicitly add a condition that waits for UI5 to get uh, to render, so that UI5 rendering is complete, and UI is stale, and just then execute the further statements. And this way we actually relieve the developer from taking care of this, and we dramatically increase the reliability of tests. Uh, how we detect uh, UI5 rendering complete? We actually track all ways uh, to defer work in browser. So we track all set timeouts, all, set, all XHRs, all native promises. We count them. And once they are all complete, we consider that uh, that rendering is complete and UI is stale. Of course, there are some more tricky ways to uh, defer work in browser. But for the general UI paradigm, this is completely enough. And in practice, this gives uh, tremendous reliability for the test. That's why our suggestion is, 
if you have some reliability problems, always starts with enabling autoweighter. One problem was that this autoweighter mechanism, it was released uh, later on. So initially it wasn't presented in OPA. And so it's not enabled by default. So what we suggest uh, when we support some tests is first enable it globally, but uh, you need to, if that happens on an old test, unfortunately you need to take care for resolving the edge cases. Uh, a typical edge case is, uh, for example, checking for uh, control, that, uh, checking for some interaction that uh, happens or that stops on its own. For example, a message toast. Because a uh, message toast is shown, then it disappears, so there is some guarding timeouts at time operation. And as mentioned, the uh, operator waiter simply waits for it to complete. And so for such rare cases, when you have uh, when you have some operation that is limiting outweighter usage, our suggestion is to disable it for individual weight force only when necessary. Just like in this case uh, that we that I suggest with uh, with finding the message toast. Also, due again to due to historical reasons, uh, outweighter is not enabled on starting the application. It feels natural that it should be, but uh, again, unfortunately, we have a large legacy of tests that were written before this outweighter mechanism was was implemented, and so they implemented their own synchronization mechanism. The classical one is waiting for a busy indicator, but unfortunately, those mechanisms con uh, conflict with our uh, with our outweighter, and so we can't enable it by default. So. The advice is enable Outweighter globally in your extent config, and then enable it also in, when starting the application, just like uh, given given the example the example given here. So that's for the Outweighter. The uh, second most uh, common problem, or the most common problem with uh, tests, are timeout. So you run your test, at some point it starts giving timeouts. And here the timeout, you need to realize that actually uh, OPA test timeouts after 15 seconds. Actually this error message means that there is, not that there is some backend timeout because you need to remember that everything is mocked in OPA, in OPA, so the backend is mocked. But this means that simply an element was not found. And most likely reason for element not found is simply because it's not presented, because the test and the application, the mm, test application states diverge. For example, because there, uh, the test found a, um, found a regression, or because uh, because of some some other issues. And so, when seeing this issue or having timeout issue. What you first need to do is check the message because the message explains very clear, very thoroughly what is searched and why is it why it's not found. I mean, it says searching this, searching that, doesn't find it because something is, for example, is not visible. So the suggestion is always start from the first test. Don't forget that the OPA tests are stateful because they, they are using QUnit because of the testing framework, but they are stateful because you have state in the application. So start from the top, search for the first error, solve it, and just then continue on. Another type of timeout that is very, uh, that, fr that sometimes is, uh, is uh, um, abused, let's say, is that you know that we have the QUnit timeout, which guards the whole test, so, so the whole QUnit test statement. Uh, by default, this is, six, uh, this is 60 seconds, but uh, it should not be increased, uh, increased significantly, and especially because then you will, lose, um, you will lose these nice screenshots that happened when you, uh, when the test timeouts. So you should take care that the wait for timeout should not go over a CUNY timeout, and otherwise you will lose, uh, 
the screenshots and you'll start getting some ugly timeout messages that are very hard to relate to your application logic. There is a third timeout, that's a timeout of the whole test. So if you have a large test, this could go over the default limit of 15 minutes. And then our suggestion is split your scenarios in several HTMLs that encapsulate the test. This way you won't need to bother with the runner timeouts. Oh, into the runner timeouts. And so these are generally the timeouts topic. These, are, these were the second most important. And now Svetlina will continue with some more uh, some more good practices. Okay. Um, so before I uh, start with the matches, let's. Uh, sorry. Um, so let's do a quick uh, recap on what we want from an OPA test. So as all other tests, we want them to be easy to understand. Um, and with OPA, we want the test to be um, on a level of logic that is close to the application so that application developers find it easy to write. Um, so basically, the test should work on the control uh, level of abstraction. Uh, ideally, um, the rendered DOM should be uh, black boxed to the test. Uh, we shouldn't um, refer to it. Um, in addition, um, we want the, the test to verify um, uh, the logic uh, and the data that is represented by a control. And we don't want to test the visualization of a control or its internal details. And as you know, controls by themselves are already, already tested, so no need to um, duplicate effort. Um, so uh, as I hope you already know, um, we have uh, built-in matchers, for example, properties, ancestor, and binding path. And uh, they are based on this principle of uh, the um, control abstraction. Um, and you could, of course, write your own, but this is very risky. Um, one thing we have often seen is that people um, delve into the internals of the control. So if uh, you rely on the DOM, uh, it is likely to change. It is in no way guaranteed by UI5. And if you want to do an upgrade, you need to maintain the tests. And it's very time consuming. Um, another thing is uh, that people often use uh, the control API uh, in terms of uh, public uh, methods. Um, but this is not correct because um, these functions are not intended to be uh, used by a human user of an application in most cases. And if you um, call them directly, um, you... Um, could hide some problems uh, and the test could be false positive. Um, so in the end, we um, recommend using uh, the uh, built-in modules. So once we uh, have uh, our controls uh, located, uh, we need to stably interact with them. So what happens, what we want is uh, that the test should interact uh, in the way that user typically interacts with the application. Um, so what happens on user input? Uh, DOM events are generated, uh, and then like um, some event callbacks are called. Um, I don't have much time left, so. <laughs> um, well, I'm just going to hang over to Maxim, unfortunately. If you want uh, to find out more, um, contact us in the experts uh, corner. Okay. Let's go. Okay, and so uh, because we covered a lot of bad practices, uh, maybe you you get the impression that it's really hard to write reliable tests. But in practice, if you follow those guidelines, uh, like your first your test will be really simple, or more simple than having it with, for example, your custom matchers or custom actions or custom 
uh, interaction with control APIs. But second, it will be extremely reliable. And for a proof, I've done a recording. So we will see it's only 15 se 50 seconds. Uh, this is a recording of a test that is part of our OpenAI 5 test suite. It is, uh, it is executed on every commit. And this means at least 150 times a day. And it's executed for years without false positive. So imagine the reliability. OK, I will run it. And as you see, this is an old data test. So imagine the logic that it exercises. So it exercises the whole data processing, data binding up to your generation with uh, smart controls. So this is uh, a significant part of, of our stack. And you see it runs extremely fast. So fast you barely see the control render before the polling, before Outweighter catches the control, it is rendered reliably. So this could be very minimum 400 millisecond periods. And then it interacts. Yes. And this is not a trivial test. It was de developed a lot some time ago. Works extremely reliable and actually the the net effect is that this test is actually uh, a benefit for uh, this application or for this uh, group. It's not a liability for them, but it keeps their delivery uh, uh, with enough quality or with high quality. Okay, so this was kind of uh, kind of proof that it's possible and it's it's in my opinion relatively easy. If uh, if you have any comments or questions, you can meet us at the expert session. And uh, otherwise, thank you, and uh, I enjoy. This will be helpful with your testing.